Hey there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship here with another video on our series on Agile COBOL. We're still looking at how we can unit test our COBOL code. And um, in the previous video, we looked at the sort of the anatomy of a, a unit test suite. And we've got a similar kind of anatomy for our test suite here with some small differences, as we'll see. But in this video, we're going to talk about a related problem, which is how do we write fast running unit tests for code that has external dependencies. And to illustrate what I mean by that, I wanted to show you this code here, which prices video rentals for a video library based on the IMDB rating of the movie. So given the IMDB ID for that movie, we need to connect to an external system. In this case, it's a web service for IMDB movies and retrieve the information about the rating for that movie. Now, I want to unit test my pricing logic. Let's just take a look at the logic here. The basic price of a movie rental is $4.95, so that's set by default. But for high-rated movies, we add another pound. And for low-rated movies, we subtract a pound from that basic price. So a high-rated movie, a, a movie with a rating more than seven, um, we charge $5.95. And if the rating is less than four, in other words, if the movies are turkey, um, then we charge three ninety five. So that's the logic we want to test. But how can we test that logic, bearing in mind that we need to get that IMDb rating in order to know how much to charge? How do we write a test for this that doesn't involve actually connecting to the IMDb web service? And for that, we're going to use what's called a test double. A test double is a module that's used in a test that from the outside looks like the real thing. In other words, it has the same parameters defined in its linkage section, but it's got a what's called a, a test double implementation. Now, this particular kind of test double is one that we require to retrieve data for us. So its job is to return test data, in this case, the IMDB rating. And let's take a look at um, the stub that I've written here, so our rating stub. And um, what I've done here is I've defined it so that we've got an external variable here that we can set in our test to say what rating we would like it to return. So it's not actually going to connect to the web service. It's just going to return whatever rating we tell it to return from the test. So the test decides what the test data is. So that's part of the setup of the test, as we'll see in a minute. In the linkage section, we've defined what the signature of this particular module is in terms of its parameters. If we take a look inside our rating params uh, file there, then we have a signature that accepts the IMDB ID and then is going to return whatever rating we tell it to return. The same signature would be used in the module that actually connects to the web service in the real um, production system. So as long as they look the same in terms of their linkage section, then we can have as many different implementations for whatever purposes that we like. In this particular case, we have an implementation, um, let's take another look at it, that just returns whatever rating our test tells it to return. So we take a look at our test here. Here's the first example. So we've got, again, we've, we've connected to this external variable here so they match and we set that in our at the beginning of the test to 6.7 what we're saying is this is an average rated movie it's not high rated it's not low rated so we're expecting the price of this movie rental to be 4.95 now here's where the business this is where the rubber meets the road in order for the test to decide to use the stub instead of the real module that connects to the real web service we need the test to be able to tell the price movie module which module to use to fetch the rating. So we pass in a reference to the stub. So remember, as long as our stub has the same signature in terms of its linkage section, accepts the exact same parameters, as long as it looks the same from the outside, um, then we can do this. Now, in object-oriented programming, we call this dependency injection. The ratings uh, module is a dependency that our 
price movie module has, but we're injecting that dependency, we're injecting the detail of which actual implementation to use from the outside. We call that dependency injection. And that allows us to have the client code decide, okay, I want you to use this module or this other module. For example, our test can decide, I want you to use the stub implementation, please. Now, our pricing move, our price movie module has no idea that it's a stub. All it knows is that its signature looks like that. That's all it needs to know. So from the outside, as long as it looks the same, we can swap the real thing with our stub and this code should still work. We wouldn't have to change this code. And as you see, what we're doing is we're calling it using the, uh, the name of the module that is passed in, that is injected into this when it's called, so that it's binding to it dynamically. It's not compile time when it says, okay, I need to compile it and link it to this module. It doesn't actually look for the module until runtime until we actually call it. So this is what we call dynamic binding or dynamic dispatch. And that's the mechanism that allows us to swap different modules in place without having to rewrite the client code, without having to rewrite our pricing logic. So it's powerful stuff. And it turns out that this is actually good design anyway, even if, it not, even if we're not doing it for testing, for unit testing. It is nice to have this flex point in the design, this sort of seam in our architecture, if you like, where we could swap a different implementation. So let's say we don't want to get ratings from IMDB anymore. Let's say that we want to get ratings from Rotten Tomatoes. Now we could do that without necessarily having to rewrite our price movie module. It would stay exactly the same. What we've done here is we've separated these concerns. How we price our videos based on ratings has got nothing to do with how we actually get that rating. They're two totally separate concerns. By designing our test in this way, by injecting the dependency in, we have cleanly separated those concerns so that we can vary how we fetch that information about the rating independently of the logic of how to price the movies. So it is good design. One other thing that you'll notice, I could have written price movie so that the code to actually fetch the rating from IMDB's web service is inside this module. In other words, this module would do two jobs. It would fetch the rating information and it would then price the movie based on that rating. Now, because I've split that work apart, so each module only does one job, it's now possible to change one module the way that one job is done without changing the way that the other job is done. So these are the two sort of components, the two key components of separating concerns in this way. So first of all, each module should only do one job, so we can change one module without changing the rest. And also, we've got dependency injection. We're injecting in the detail of which implementation to use to get the ratings from the outside, in this case from the test code, so that we can vary them independently without having to rewrite or recompile any of our code here. All of this logic stays exactly the same. So it's great for unit testing because code, whether we like it or not, is going to have external dependencies like files, um, like databases, like web services and all that kind of thing. Um, and it is good practice architecturally to cleanly separate those external dependencies and make them swappable using this dynamic mechanism by passing in the name of the module we actually want to use so that we can use the real production module or we can use a stub module like our rating stub here um, or we can change the implementation or swap even swap the implementations at runtime and for example if this was a real-time kick system um, the user could maybe select which rating source they want to use um, uh, and so on and so forth. So it, it opens up a lot of flexibility here um, and it is particularly useful for unit testing. So a stub, if you remember, is a, a module that returns test data. Its job is to return test data. So when we have a module that we want to test that, that queries, for example, a query is an external system or an external dependency. 
um, then we can fake that query using a stub like we've done here with our, our rating stub so that we can get on with the business of testing the logic that uses that data. So stubs are very, very useful for query, when we need to query, when our code queries external dependencies so that we can test our code without actually hitting those external dependencies. So our tests are much simpler and they run really, really fast. If you've got a suite of 1,000 tests or 10,000 tests that are all speaking to web services and talking to databases and reading and writing files and et cetera, et cetera, that test suite is going to run very, very slow. So that's a stub. Um, but what happens when we have an external dependency when it's not a query? We're not fetching data, but we are interested in whether or not that message was sent to the external system. And to illustrate this, I've got another uh, module here. Let's take a look at this new title module. Now, the job of this module is to format an email. In this case, I'm just doing the subject to keep it brief for demonstration purposes. So we're, we're formatting the subject of an email, and then we send that email. So there's no data coming back here. There's only data going in. And what I would like to know when I'm testing this is was send mail called with the correct information in the subject? So if we take a look at the test for this, uh, new title test, there we go. Take a look down the bottom here. So we've got information about our movie, the title, the year, and the director. And that is the information that is passed in when we call this new title module. Um, and what we want to know is, is the subject of this email equal to that? Is it formatted correctly in this way? So what we do, similar kind of thing, but this time instead of saying, give us this data back, what we're saying is, this is the data um, that we're actually going to be querying to see whether or not that's the subject, the actual subject that was used when we call send mail. So we've got another external variable here. Let's take a look inside new title. Um, somewhere in here, in our, ah, yes. Here it is. Let's take a look at our send mail fake here. So we've got another test double here. It's not a stub because it's not returning data. What this test double does is it remembers the parameter values that it was called with so that we can assert about that in our test. So we can ask, what was the actual subject? There we, there we sort of set that. What was the actual subject? Um, that was um, that was passed in when this um, test double was called. So this test is about an interaction that is supposed to happen, a message that is supposed to be sent with the correct parameter value between our new title module here and the, the module that we're using to send the mails. Similar mechanism here. I'm injecting in the name of the module. In this case. Let's go to our test. In this case, it's send mail mock there that we're injecting in. Um, so similar kind of mechanism, but this time this test is about this mock module should have been called and it should have been called with this subject. And then we assert, does that match? Do, is is the, the subject that was remembered when we called it is that the one that was actually called with? Um, so we call this kind of test double a mock object. A mock object is different, it has a different purpose to a stub. A stub is there to provide data that would come from some external dependency, like a file or a database. A mock is there to remember when it's invoked, remember, remember when it's called, and to remember potentially what parameter values it was called with so that we can test whether that message was actually sent to the external system. So here, you'll notice another thing, I'll talk about this in a minute, but here we're just saying, okay, I want you to call the new title program with the title union director and I want you to use this module 
to pretend to be the module that sends the email. It's not, it's just this. All it does is remember what subject it was called with so that we can, we can assert about that later. A slight variation here on our, uh, let's just take a look. Um, a slight variation here, if we take a look inside our tests. In the previous video, I had a very basic sort of assert equal module that I could use to essentially ask the question I want to ask at the end of my test. I've expanded that a little, and you would have to do this as well, because you're going to get assertions for different kinds of data. So for numbers and for, for text would be different. So now I have an assert text equal module for asserting that, that string values match, and an assert num equal for asserting that, that numerical values match. And as your tests grow, you probably find that you're going to get a bunch of these different kinds of assertions for different kinds of questions. So... That's the main thrust of what we're talking about in this video. In order to be able to write fast running unit tests for code that has external dependencies, that talks to web services or talks to databases or that kind of thing, we can use stubs or mocks to pretend to be the interfaces to those external systems, pretend to be the modules that contain the code that actually connects to those external dependencies, so that we can test our core logic without involving the real dependencies. So our tests are much simpler and they run much, much faster. And that's generally a good thing. The faster our unit tests run, the better it is for us, for us because the, the more often we can run them, which means that we can test for smaller changes, basically. We can make one ch change and then rerun our tests if they run fast enough, then make another change and rerun our test, rather than having to make a whole bunch of changes because our tests take three hours to run. So generally a good thing that our tests run fast. And when we get onto the videos about continuous delivery, you'll see why that is so very, very important. But from a design point of view, by using dependency injection, by passing in the name of the module that we actually want to use in the test, the code that we're testing, that creates what, what, what I call flex points in the architecture, where we can vary those things dynamically without having to rewrite the, uh, the original client code. So it very cleanly separates those concerns, creates a lot of flexibility in the design, and it allows us to write unit tests that test the majority of our core code, our core logic, very, very quickly. And that's very, very, very handy. So there you go. That's test doubles, uh, stubs and mocks. Um, very, very useful things for all sorts of reasons. Um, uh, go back, take a look at your code, see if you've got modules that contain logic that you would like to be able to test by itself, and then think about how could I extract those external dependencies into the, extract the code that connects to the, the database or whatever it is into its own module that we can then inject the name in. We can, we can call it dynamically from this code that we're testing so that we can test this without actually involving that external dependency. Okay, now in the next video, um, we're going to be um, looking at a slightly more advanced topic in unit testing, and that's parameterized tests. And these are very, very powerful things if you know how to use them. So video number three will be about parameterized tests, um, property-based testing, and more generally about what I call generative testing. And that's a very, very powerful thing if you're working on code that is particularly critical. Okay, thanks very much. Until the next video.